Hello, 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 and welcome to Reek Sauce. Um, uh, my bad. Reek Sauce. Rick Sauce. I keep on forgetting. It's supposed to be Rick's. I don't know really how. I don't remember how it's supposed to be called from Rick's. I just remember it's Rick's, not Reek's. And I used I called it in my previous videos Reek's. Um, because I like I like re. Rather than re, but it's but it's a uh, re, not re. Anyways, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today we are going to show off a little bit of the propellant designer, and I will show you how I'm going to go about this. We are using two. I don't know why I have not made spherical that much, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a bunch of different designs to show you the whole designing process. This might be a bit of a longer video as well. The whole designing process of a cartridge and how to go about it. I will do that by showing you these that I've made, explaining a little bit about them, explaining the important bits, and then putting in a cut and making all of them and then bringing you back when I finally get back to it. Yes, yes, yes. So, I'll show you my Sal versus my Dow. Literally, the main difference between these, um, the types is the shape. So, one, two, three. One, two, two, and three are all spherical. Four and five, and six being cubic. I don't think these ones work properly right now. I've not been able to make them work yet. And then you have cylindrical, which I really like, and I found to be the better ones to use, being cylindrical, or at least for M5. And then we have the type. So first you have the composition. This is basically what type of powder you're using. From what I understand, M1, like this goes in... Um, M1, M2, M5, M6, M8, M10, and all these. These are put in chronological chronological order. M1, I believe, is black powder, like that's actual um, gunpowder, like the original gunpowder, the ancient stuff. And we're gonna mess around with that a little bit, and I'll make this a whole new design. And we're gonna go. Starting off with um this. What to call it? What to call this? What to call this? Hmm. Give me one minute. I will be right back. I'm back. It felt like somebody was at the door. They were not at the door. Okay, let's go. I came up with the name. You may or may not like the name. Chow, I have my dog behind me. He gave me the idea. Chow. We ball with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make three very extremely different designs. I'm going to make what I like to do is um start with the shape. Just start with spherical. Type one. Sub one millimeter. Make it bigger or just the same, or a little bit bigger, or just the same size as one millimeter. This will help you gauge how it behaves. This to help you see how it behaves at different sizes. Type three. Oh, shoot. What's type two about? One. So then type 3 should be like this, and then I'm going to do the rest of these. Make it bigger, more than 2 millimeters, basically. This is the best way to just troubleshoot how this propellant is going to work, and I will show you how to put this into your cartridge later, but what I'm basically going to show you right now is what I'm going to do to make the rest of the types. I'm going to just change the geometry of it. Change the length. Mm, 
mean it. And then four, five, six, so the next one's seven, just to show you what I'm doing with the cylindrical, because it has a slightly different thing. I'm not going to try perforations at first. I'll mess around with that later. But for now, I'm going to show you that I'm going to make the length one millimeter. I will, I think I always do that. Hold on. Seven cylindrical get one millimeter. Eight is two millimeters. Oh, it has the perforations. Okay, that's nice to know. Nine. Way longer with a little bit. Okay, so five, two. Two, one. Oh, okay. Seven. One point five. Two, one. And five, two. All right. That's what I'm going to be doing with the rest of them. I will bring you guys back when I've done that. Just to save a little bit of time. I'm going to try to save time here this time. So I'm back after making all the propellants. I will just show you real quick. I made all of them. Okay, that's cool. All right. We're back. The next part is not to make a cartridge. Quite actually, yes. The next part is to make the actual cartridge itself. We're not going to be messing with the grenade. We're not going to be messing with the magazine or the firearm. The first four things that you need to master is a propellant. So, if you're a starter, this is what you do. This is what I do just to figure stuff out. Um. To help figure out what they are, how they're going to behave. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see what is the goal of this thing? What do you want it to do? What I want this to do is basically be a 57 millimeter that's slightly cheaper, slightly smaller. So I'm going to look up those dimensions and I'm going to then bring you guys back in when I want to type in those dimensions. And after I type in a name, I'm going to think about the name off screen. But I just wanted to show you that I, got, that I did that and bring you back in in a minute. Alright, change of plans. I realized I messed up more than what I thought I originally messed up. Um, so you see this round. I did say in the previous video that I made that you guys could probably watch or just not watch. That I needed to change this round. I did not realize how much I actually messed up on this round. I messed up so bad. So, um, let's fix this, shall we? <laughs> let's fix this with me. First things first. Let's make this damn thing pretty. Alright. We're gonna change this entirely to just Okami. Okami means wolf. Um, no, we're gonna call this one the emu. This is dog. We're actually gonna call this the guard dog that I looked up. There's a term in Japanese. I'm for this game. I'm gonna make basically a pseudo Japanese empire with way less war crimes, hopefully. Dog in Japanese. Nope, that's not, 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 that's not what I wanted. This is guard dog. Akita. Akita. Akita's the dog I like, right? Yes, Akita. We'll call it Akita. The Akita Emu. These will all be known as the Akita Emu. Short will be called I. I'll call it I later. We're going to have to retool everything, and I will walk you through this step by step. But first things first, just the cartridge for now. Um, I might even have to cut the video after I make the cartridge, but I'll show you what we're going to do. The Akita Emu. Type 1. All in all, we are going to probably have... Let me see. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 different tests. I'm not going to show you guys the testing of all of them, but I will show you the testing of a few of them just to show you the process. And this is going to take a long time, and I might have to record the rest of this whole series or maybe even video later. But let's do this. This is going to be the first round that is the um the quick early World War One. This is basically going to be the challenger for the QF two pounder or three pounder, I think it was. The thirty seven millimeter round that the Americans and the British used. Um, 182. I am having a goal set up for. Alright, so I looked up what I wanted it to be. So, the rival round that we have is 223 millimeters. And in order to get it relatively to the same comparative length, I'm trying to make it comparable. To it on um, a slightly heavier round than I typically would want it to be but it is a bit longer than what I would want it to be we're also gonna make it a little bit thicker than I first made it because I realized that two millimeters is way too thin for this kind of round um, 10 millimeters looks goofy like that's Warhammer goofy so five millimeters just seems to be quite appropriate like very very appropriate for this type of round um, something to take note of more than just oh my goodness i have to go okay hold on i'm gonna go do this um a thicker casing is actually very useful because this will help propel your bullet and your bullet actually use more and um so if you make a thin casing the casing might melt away and be pushed off too easily whereas if you make a thicker casing it will actually help contain the explosion and push out the bullet forward rather than allowing the casing to be pushed back more and losing a bit of your efficiency. This won't really matter with your typical rounds like um like the Kitsun. The Kitsune is not gonna have that issue. This is one millimeter thickness, it's not ever gonna have an issue. The UBs might technically have that issue a little bit. The Tachyon Suba is not really going to have that issue at all. It's one millimeter thick for a reason. Um, what also helps is making this stronger. We currently don't have steel casing. Steel casing really helps with that. But we don't have steel casing in this game, so we can't do that. Time to go back to the Akita. Um, no, it's not time to go back to the Akita. I was supposed to be doing something while I did that. I'm supposed to take a swash of everything. Um, the tip color take a swash of that. I'm gonna have to take a swash of these three basically. Jacket slash fan color. Take a swash of that. Um, it's these three that we're going to be using for the most part. Oh, not that one. My bad. So we already got the tungsten variant. And we already got everything that was actually important, so we're not even going to bother. Actually, no. There's one more that we do want to bother with, and that's... Oh, I did not properly do my job here. Hold on, let me fix this. Let me fix this real quick. Grab this swash. And then we do have to fix, not the RF, but the T visualizers, tip color, use this swash, use tip, and then the jacket itself, the jacket is the outside, that's the part that you can see if you should look at the interior, the part that you can see is on the outside here, the inside is a whole different color, you can change the inside color, I don't think that matters that much. So now, this is important for knowing what your bullet looks like. This is important for knowing what your bullet is going to function as. Both of them might help you identify your bullet 
one is going to help you identify way more if you actually um, use it as uh, no it needs that um I'm going to actually develop a round your nose variant because I just realized and I through my research that it would be way more historically accurate to first design it not as a shell but just as a normal bullet with nothing special about it, just rounded off. And then the next one, I'm going to make it as a super special um, a spitzer and whatever. But for starters, the important part about bullet design is just making sure you actually get a bullet that works properly and to an efficient degree. So um, the length, a bit more longer. The bullet itself, I would typically want it to be shorter, but I feel like I might benefit from having it and keeping it a bit longer. I'm not going to use all of this length, that's why I transferred it to the actual bullet itself a little bit. Maybe I'll actually use a bit more of this length in diameter. The diameter seems to be perfect with the bullet. It doesn't look too wonky, it's not too thin. It might be a little too thick, but it's, it's fine for the size of the bullet. Boxer is fine, I might think about making it burden. But I think boxer is more than appropriate. It's the proper casing composition. The casing color does need to be switched to something a bit more appropriate for me. Not worried about looking at the interior. Just leave it at that. And now comes the first. Now comes the very, very fun part. Oh, hold on. Um, I'm going to save the design and I will be right back. All right, so I found the comparable evidence. Um, Aggravatingly enough, there is nothing on the actual QF 3-pounder round. Um, even 10 times more aggravating than that, there is about 10 articles on the 10 different, ten to 20 different variants of the basically QF 3. And if you didn't know what a QF 3 is, I can tell you all about it. QF 3 is basically just a 37mm round, okay? QF 3, 3 pounds. That's all it means. Quick firing, 3 pound, okay? Um, that's everything I found, which is very annoying, but I could find pictures, and the pictures show that it only grew to about 45 to 50 millimeters in thickness in the base. This is important to know how thick you want it to, this, um, round to be. I really don't want it to be stupid thick, but I don't want it to be really thin either. Um, I don't want it to be straight thin, so I did thin it down just a little bit. This does make the bullet itself look really long, but I promise you, once we start to spitzer these, it no longer looks that long. So, it's fine. Also, you have to consider the fact that you need a really a lot of weight behind your bullet for penetration. Um, weight does mean it doesn't go as fast, so there is a cutoff between what you can do. But, um, yeah, we will do it like this, and then what I will show you that we are going to do First and foremost is we are going to apply this with every type of powder, and we're going to fully fill it, every of it. I'm just going to do that, save it, click this, fill, save, and you will see that as you change the size and the type, oh shoot, my bad, no, you don't do it like this, click fill, click save, um, then you change the name and then you change the type, then you click fill, then you click save, and then you do this with all of them, and you're going to basically see that um, as you change these types and whatnot, <laughs> that you're going to see a drastic change in how much powder we can put in here. So I'm not going to show you all of these, I'm just going to show you the difference between how they function with the different powders that you're going to be using. And I will figure out the numbering system off screen as well, but I just wanted you to see the different powders and how they just wildly differentiate depending on the size that we're using. We can go earlier into the video. It's not too long a video, so I have to worry about rewinding too much about um, just 
seeing what we're using. We will have to edit how much powder is in all of these, almost all of these. You, we will see that it's actually not that difficult. I'm going to show off only a few more, and then I'm going to do fill up the rest later on the designs. Um, okay, just to show you that the different powders will vary, will differentiate wildly, and you will have to actually edit them yourself to see which ones will be more beneficial and whether or not it's even worth it because there's some that just take up so little space that you don't put enough powder in there to actually be useful and you'll see that later on but anyways i'm going to fill up and make the other let's see we need 21 designs and i only have nine so that's about 12 more designs so let me go do that and i'll bring you back right back all right so now we have all 21. Only took me a minute, but I'm really trying to cut down on time. You might notice I'm only typing, only coming in for a few seconds at a time. Really trying to save on that time. You can see we should all have different ones. Yes, three. All right. Now we will go to again. We're only going to worry about these four. We finished this one. We are going to be messing with this one a lot, and we're only going to be messing around with this receiver a little bit. I did already design a level 35, so I'll just quickly walk you through what's important. What's really important is you want to make these out of something pretty relatively strong. I recommend something like 1020, if it's a small cartridge, like a carbine that's um, 556, you can probably get away with 1020, 1075. I think they no longer make, the devs no longer made it to where your bolt can actually break, because... They broke it somehow with one of the updates, and it was breaking too often when it shouldn't have. But I'm saying that 1020 is a safe bet if you make it pretty thick. Um, I'm going to actually thin this down since I don't need to worry about that too much. 1020, and I think I'm going to actually just look this up. MPA is what you're going to be really interested in. Ignore these top ones up here and ignore these right here and look from here all the way down to here so from 316 to 930 931 and 0 for particularly the receiver part and you're going to look from here over to this one right yep okay and you look all the way down to here all right you're going to see what you want to use for tensile strength mpa you see that these two are really strong but you might want to use um, my bad, not 1020, but 1075. Either 1075, because it's really cheap, and you get a good, uh, what's it called, performance out of it. And if you want a really expert performance, but you're willing to sacrifice and pay the cost, you're going to want to use 4150 or 4140 if you want something a little bit more in the middle of these two. I'm going to use 4140. For the composition and secondary composition, um, making it bolt action. It's literally an artillery piece. I'm not going to try to make this semi-automatic until I get to World War II. Then I'm going to want to make a semi-automatic, maybe even a fully automatic variant of it. But I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Uh, stamped. Not too worried about that. I already did ten. You're going to really want this to be um, tools. Until you get to World War II, then you're going to want to think about simple versus specialized. Um, specialized, from what I understand, makes it very, very easy to produce because it's better for the factory. And the factory and the people designing it don't have to think, how is somebody going to get into it? They can think of their own special way that they're going to get into it. Welded is really easy. Threaded is less easy for the barrel attachment. How does this barrel go on to this receiver? And then hinged is... I, I kind of like hinged. The idea of hinged. From what I understand, these are in uh, chronological order. So when you first start the game, I think welded is going to be the only option. And then threaded becomes available later on. 
from how I understand it, that's how a lot of things work in this game. Also, when we make the actual forty, just to reduce the cost quite a bit, um, make this ten seventy because I don't feel like most of this is that worthwhile. Single action place on bottom. Capacity, we will make it have a magazine. Um, is there a magazine over here? Yes. No magazine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't do magazine. Don't actually click magazine if you want it to be like a bolt action rifle with a magazine in it. You only click magazine if you want to make it something like a, um M1 Grand or if you want to make it something more like a, what did you call it? Anything that's specialized, like an M1 Grand, uh, Winchester rifle, uh, pump shotgun, or, you know, an M4 machine gun, or AK-47, that's when you start making and putting in magazines. Um, we're not going to worry about that for now. We will make sure it's a strip of clip notch, and that literally just makes it easier to put in all, all the ammo, rather than putting in one at a time. You can basically have a magazine without a magazine which isn't important for right now. We're just trying to get the round to work for right now. This is, might be 45 minutes. I might make it a two-parter if it goes beyond 45 minutes. So, magazines in the back, that makes sense. Um, bolt type rotating. No, we'll not make it rotating, as a matter of fact. We will make the locking position up in the front. We'll make two of these. I won't worry about doing that right now. One piece stamped cartridge is actually going to be the Akita Inu. Yes, yes, we have to change that entirely and we're going to just have to delete the other three because they're completely useless. Bolt action, you make it straight. Bolt attachment will be welded. Knob attachment will be welded. Bolt mechanism will be Straight pull knob size will be normal, not small. I would hate to have it small. I mean, it is only a 35 pounder, so it wouldn't be too bad. We will save it as 35. We're not too worried about the receiver. Go ahead and show you a little bit of the barrel. 35, toggle visualizer. We are going to make this a thousand millimeters. Best way to describe it is one meter, and one meter is almost, is only like a little bit it's 1.25 yards if i remember correctly so it's literally to your doorknob is one meter that's pretty short if i think about it as an anti-tank weapon so i'm going to make it a tad bit longer and this should help my barrels actually i'm going to look at whether or not i want to do that and that will help me look at the time for now okay we have time wow these things were way longer than what i was thinking and way flipping heavier than what i was thinking as well um the whole idea of this is to be extremely lightweight and extremely movable so i'm not even going to attempt to make them near that range or near that length so i will show off what the advanced build is real quick you get to decide how many segments you want. Personally, I only want, I would only want two for something like this. Um, we're not going to have any of this going into it. We don't know. Uh, cartridge, car, 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 cartridge. Oh. Yep. And I keep the email. Extremely thick. Bore thickness, chamber thickness. Um, bore material thickness. I don't think I have to worry about that because we're going to do 25 and 20. Let me make it a thousand just to show off real quick. I'm not even going to use this to be fairly honest. I don't know why I'm keeping so long on it, but I do want to show it off. So we'll show it off real quick and we'll make this just 750 because it is a small round. And you can see here that it does actually shorten down. And if you want to see real quick how much it shortens down, you can just do that right there. And you see where and how quickly it could shorten down. 
if I do, would only want to show the unit down to like 15. Um, by making it an advanced bore, you can actually save on weight, save on thickness, and still keep good performance. So it's really useful, actually. I still don't really want to use it, though. Um, it complicates things, and it makes a lot of variables that I'm not trying to worry about right now. We will just make it 25 long. If I feel like I can get away with a little bit shorter, I will. We'll start off with 1440. Typically, you want your barrel to be made out of 1440 or 4150. But if you're using a pistol round or, um, mind you, small cartridge, anything less than 9mm, um, or a carbine round, so something like 5.56 or really 6mm, you might be able to get away with two. But anything bigger than 6mm, you really want to use 1440 or 1450. You can just make it really thin and get away with a lot of it rather than, um, it would still be costly, but if you make it thin, you can get away with a lot. Right now, we're just testing the round, so you're not going to have to actually really worry about the cost right now. We'll worry about that after you actually get the cartridge out and how you want it to actually function. So save the design, and um, we'll go ahead and back right out of it. Actually, you know what? To make it a bit more realistic, because you don't want to make it too, too good. Like, you don't want to make it too thick because you want it to be very realistic to what you're going to be using, because then you're going to have to edit it again, and maybe edit the round, and realize that you're not going to have a functioning round system afterwards. But, um, yeah, we're going to do this. And that should be realistic. So we already did this. That job basically finished. This job is finished. Now it's the cartridges that we really got to worry about. And there's an easy way to tell whether or not we even have to worry about anything. I think we're still going to use this range setup and everything. Realistically speaking, I think it's I think it's realistic enough for our job. 35 with the 35. Inu. So you can see here. Don't worry about this. You're not going to see anything for these first rounds. I'll show you like five random rounds. I'll pick five random numbers just to show you um, whether or not we're even going to have to worry about it. So too much stress, so we're going to have to lower the amount of power that's actually in the round. We're not even going to worry about this right now, because this doesn't work until you actually get the test results to work. But we can see from already that at 100 meters, 93,000 joules. It's a lot of joules, and it's only a little bit overpowered in MPA. So test number two. Test number two does not break the barrel, and by the look of it, gives off more energy. This is going to be a miracle round. You're going to want to keep this, and what you're going to immediately do is you're going to leave this screen because this round is completely outperforming the other round already before you even bothered to edit it. So you're going to load up type 1. It's not performing. It will never perform to what you really want it to perform at right now. So delete the round. Now what you're not going to do is you're not going to delete the car, the um, propellant because you might be able to use that propellant, believe it or not, for something else. That's why we currently have 21 propellants because you can probably use a different propellant. 1, 2, and 5, and I think he said all the way up to M10 of the propellants will be available when you start the game. You will then have to research and unlock further propellants. And I don't think you control the research from what I remember, at least not 100%. And so a very hands-off game. Again, um, probably something more akin to Rule the Waves or even, um, and less so like Aurora 4X, but still very similar with just the amount of customization that we have available. So I'm going to then go through these, but first I'm going to check the time. The time says I'm going to go ahead and make this. I think I'll just put a cut in here. And if I can't complete it tonight, I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. And we'll continue the video from there. But I think I'll continue the video for about 10 more minutes, and then we'll just see what we... Yeah, that's what we'll do. 
Alright, we'll do this. Continue the video for 10 more minutes, put a cut in here to actually make the rounds, and then I will show you the process of making variants of the rounds. The variants are the, um, the armor-piercing metal round that are steel rounds that I showed you. The steel round versus the tungsten round versus the super specialized um, super penetrator round. And the um, just the normal variations, the HE, the APHE that I'm going to make, and all those variants, but I'll bring you guys back later. As a little kicker, um, oh, let me get closer, let me get closer, hold on, hold on, hold on. As a little kicker, a little side note here, you don't have to go through 21 like I do, okay? I've already spent a lot of time developing these different propellants, so, yeah, you can make only the first nine. I implore you to only make nine. Pick one of these first three, the one, the two, or the five, and then just choose a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of different numbers that you like. I use 0.5, 1, and 5, generally speaking. If you like 2, 4, and 8, you can use those. Um, I implore you to use something more like 0.2, 2, and then 4. And then you can even make one that's large like A's. But make a range of them, and then make that range in the different shapes of that propellant. And I implore you to then maybe try to make and play around with one other type of propellant. Because one, one propellant might work better than another. Quick little example is these are the same type of propellant. I believe these are both M1, but these are two different shapes. And I'm keeping both the type 2 and type 5 for the next section of the video. Because it... Whoa, what? Type 2? Excuse me? Oh, I didn't change the table. Look at the table. It has 100,000 joules, 96,000 or 100 meters. And then this one that I'm also keeping, it breaks the barrel quite quickly. But it's double, more than double, the amount of energy, which means that I can reduce the amount of energy and stress on the barrel and hopefully actually get something that can be relatively... I'd say what's acceptable is 2,800 um, lifetime cycles or rounds through the barrel to achieve something that's more than 9,600 joules. I will still keep both of these though, and I will see you in a minute when I've gone through the rest of these designs. <laughs> so all in all, I just looked at all of them. These are the ones that we're using. And to show you the performance, and I'll talk a little bit into why, and why you really want to do a range, and why you want to look at it. So if we just went with the first one, we would be stuck at, let me see, we'd be stuck at a maximum of 100 joules of energy, with um, roughly 500 meters per second, which is fairly fast for this size of round. Peak pressure of 303, doing 3,000 lifetime cycles. We did come across a second round that is less, performs way, I wouldn't say way worse, performs worse though. Performs a bit worse, um, a little bit slower, a little bit less accurate, I think. Way less pressure though, with a little bit less energy. We're sacrificing 10% energy, but look at the amount of lifetime cycles we get. Now, I might want to get rid of this one, because I think if I just get rid of a little bit of powder from Type 2, I can get something similar to this. We don't need 173,000. Your barrel, especially if this is supposed to be an anti-tank barrel, which is, this is, will never reach 100,000 shots, more than likely than not. Even if you're using a machine gun, it's not going to use 100,000 until you get to something around the level of a minigun. But at that point, there's so many other things to consider before you even worry about that for your first gun, your first anti-tank gun. So, I think I am just going to end up trashing this round, because... 
on second thought, I can get this to do almost the same thing by simply reducing this by a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean the most tiniest amount. And now we should be seeing a drastic change from this. Like a little bit less energy, a little bit more barrel lifetime cycles for a little bit less jewels. I might not even worry about changing that, to be perfectly honest. I'll keep that like that because I like clean numbers. Speaking of clean numbers, I'll see what happens when I do this right here. Because I just like clean numbers. That's my whole MO. So, you can see we lost a few thousand jewels. But we just gained 10,000 barrel lifetime cycles. So you can really edit it to how you want it. Do you want something that's going to last a really long time? For this one, I think I might load it up all the way, rather than worrying about how pretty it looks in logistics. But you can see we didn't lose much energy at all, and again, 90,000 jewels. 90,000. This sucks against something, it's hurting it a lot. And um, so now what we are going to do is we're going to edit and we're going to play around with the layers. How much propellant is used in each layer and then how much we're trying to pull up this way. You notice this is um, simulated. This is a simulated space so you can't over charge it like this. I can't just put 1400 propellant because the size of the propellant is too thick for this. So I have to make it, what was it, 1350? And I can't put five more in it because that's too tall for this. It wouldn't fit like this. So you can only put in a fixed amount. I'll keep it at this. It's clean. I'll see if I need to change it later. But I'll bring you guys back when I edit them down into... A finalized amount that I like. All right, with this craziness, I do have enough time to make the second episode. I will make the t second episode later. Worry not. I have found the numbers, the rounds that we're working with, and probably the powder that we're going to end up working with as well. I'm going to keep the type two and the type five. We're going to end up using the Type 5. So the main issue with the Type 5 is that we can get more power out of it, but it tends to kill the barrel a bit faster. Um, the Type 2 seems to be a little bit more efficient, but we're literally talking about 5% more efficient, but it cannot go over, I think it's maximum amount of joules of energy it can give us is like 107.7. Whereas the other one can give us however much ever energy that we want at the cost of literally a hundred less barrel cycles. So um, the purpose of this really is for muzzle energy. We want more out of our gun. Being able to get this though, this is beautiful. We've got a good amount of um, life cycles for something that's only a little bit faster, terribly tiny little bit faster, same amount of accuracy, only a little bit less accuracy actually, a little bit more pressure out of the barrel, so a little bit less amount of rounds, very minute differences. The Type 2 really might be kind of better. Actually, we might stick with the Type 2, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. And we'll keep the Type 5 in our mind. We'll keep the Type 5 because we can get more energy out of it. But the thing is, is that um, the only reason why I don't want to keep the Type 5, and I will go with the Type 2 instead, is because the Type 2 is lighter. No matter what we do, the Type 2 always ends up lighter, and thus that makes it a little bit more efficient. 
and it might just be better and easier on our logistics. Just a tiny little bit, because if you're carrying a hundred of these rounds, 13.75 versus 13.76 kilograms. Hmm. You know what? No, we won't keep the type 2 as a metal round. No. No, we will get rid of it. Okay. Well, I'll see you all in the next episode. Um, type 2 versus type 5. They're both almost equally functional. Like, almost no difference between them, but I think I'm going to go with the type 5. It's literally 0.01%, and we're talking about what? Not even 1%, because right here would be 10%, right here would be 1%. Less than 1% heavier, okay. Not even going to worry about it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep the type 5. And we will delete the type 2 knowing that the Chow type 2 is probably something that we'll use for a different round later on. And just as a little closer, because it's getting really long and I don't want this video to be too much longer, we will look at um, various range tables for this round. Test, ricocheting off, it can probably pierce 9 millimeters. yep. Oh my goodness. Here I am thinking that it was like um, 2,500 mil. Right? So we see that this thing cannot pierce anything at all. Again, it's rounded off and it's made out of lead, so it's not really going to be able to pierce anything. So, 250 meters away. It's really not piercing anything. Interesting. And at urban combat range, we're thinking of only 10 millimeters. All right. Well, lead will typically only be used as tracer rounds, so training and tracer rounds. So yeah, we'll we'll see later. Okay. All right. I'll see you next time. Leave a like if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, leave a dislike. If you have something question you would like to ask of me, write a comment down below. Most importantly, try to have a nice day, and I will see you all in the next video.